Tony Grossi, a longtime Browns beat reporter, thinking through uh, some of the things that could happen in the Browns offseason. Realistically, you look at this thing, and 3-14 and 14 is not out of the question at this point after getting through this. And how many coaches survived 3-14? and 14? Hugh Jackson did, and how'd that go? You know, uh, Wait, you're saying the door is open. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be. And, and it's unfortunate because it's not all on him. But who's it on then? Who is it on if it's not the head coach? With that, let's welcome in Fred Greetham, senior analyst for the Orange and Brown Report. Fred, it's on everybody. I mean, there's, there is nobody um, that is blameless for what has been a disastrous season. Yeah, I mean, they talk about they don't want to, you know, when they're talking about individuals on the team, they never – talk about any individual and that's the same thing you know we're all in this together and they've talked about the collaborative but that's one problem with nobody really becomes held accountable because it's never pinned on one individual unless it goes all the way to the top to the ownership you know and so i i think anything could be on the table depending i do think these next last four games do matter but I really think that most of the accountability will be from the assistant coaches on down. Coordinators maybe as high as offensive or special teams, but certainly assistant coaches, because that's usually where, you know, where <laughs> scapegoats, you know, end up if the head coach survives or the general manager survives. But I really think that they don't look at it as a wholesale um, start from scratch, go get a new coach, go get a new general manager and just start over, at least from the ownership at this point. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy Haslam was at practice last Thursday before the Steelers game, walking around, talking with members of the media, seemed to be in a pretty good mood. He didn't seem to be kind of what you see not that we've been around a lot of owners, but those that I have been around, um, you never really saw them when a big move like a firing was going to take place. And uh, again, I'll go back to, I feel like if they felt like they were going to make a change and they felt Mike Brable was the guy, you would have uh, probably done it by now rather than get to the end of the season and have open season. And maybe Brabel was never even considered and maybe he's not interested or whatever, but I, I really don't think they're going to make any changes at that level. But, yeah, 3-14 and 14 would be catastrophic. But, um, <laughs> you know, you don't have more $10 million-plus players on a roster and talk about the Super Bowl and then get a three-win season and nobody, you know, blinks an eye and says, oh, well, back we'll be back next year, start over. Well, <clears throat> when you look at it, the offense was try they, they tried to remake the offense around Deshaun Watson, and that was kind of where everything started to unravel. The, the quarterback play has been awful, and, and I'm a guy that defended Watson. Um, hadn't worked. Don't need to see any more of it. Time to move on. Um, and, and I think, I think you kind of clean out the offensive side of the ball again. It's been bad. Yeah, you got. You know, now that you have a body of work, Joe Flacco at the end of 23, and then Watson, and then Winston, even though he's been inconsistent, he's averaged over 300 yards a game in the six games. So you've seen a body of work that you can even get recycled journeyman veteran quarterbacks and still have a pretty good offense. I I really go back to that, you know, those seven games with Watson. They go one and six. The season was over. The defense had been playing pretty good at the beginning of the year, good enough to win two or three more games, but the offense was so bad, didn't score over 18 points, it almost seems to have carried over to the rest of the team. The defense now lately, to me, they played a little better last week until the offense gave the game away, but against the Broncos, they didn't play well. They couldn't stop Denver every time, you know, they were putting up points, but they kept giving it back to Denver. Even with the pick sixes, they gave up 27 points. So 
you know, I think it's affected them all. I think the recipe this year, you felt like you had maybe not the number one defense, but you thought you at least had a top 10 defense that could keep you in games. And then a good kicker, good special teams. So you could stay close. And if the offense could do anything, just be average, a little above average, at the beginning, you could survive and then get better as the season went on. The season, the offense started so bad, it buried them before they ever knew what hit them. I mean, when you're one and six, I don't care unless you're the Detroit Lions that one year. You know, you just really can't get out from underneath it. And so that's that's the snowball effect. And what's the big question is, Trotting out Watson, even when he was playing bad, after seeing what we've seen with Winston, I'm convinced they would have won two, maybe three more games in that stretch if you would have, per se, brought him in like the relief pitcher. You know, things aren't going well. Let's try the relief pitcher. And all he had to do was lead him to a drive, a winning drive against the Raiders or the Giants or a couple other situations, and you win two or three other games. You can always go back to Watson if you want to, but try something else. But they just never changed, and it makes you wonder how long would it have went if Watson wouldn't have tore his Achilles. I mean, because we asked, we saw it several weeks before they kept trotting him out there. So they obviously thought he could play himself out of this slump, but, you know, I think now it's put to rest. So... Yeah, it's it's just unraveled, and I think it really is on the decision makers, whether it was Kevin Stefanski saying, we're going with Watson as long as he's standing upright no matter what, because you let the season get out of get out of hand. You could have you could have made some moves earlier in the year. Yeah, and, and you know, the two two teams you point out have two wins. The Ravens, or uh, rather the Raiders and the Giants, and one of those two wins for each of them is against the Browns. 